Peace and welcome to Oddly Familiar. Today's episode is a little bit random. It's not about songs or samples, but today we are taking a look at things that just seemed familiar in gaming. These are things that don't really fit with other categories, so we decided to give them their own episode. Sit back, get comfortable, and let's talk Oddly Familiar. Our first up comes from an Activision TV commercial. On April 20th of 1982, Activision released Pitfall on the Atari 2600. And in 1983, this commercial was airing across the country. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry, no other man will do. So this one is pretty easy, I think, because the actor hasn't changed much. He's just older. The kid at the very beginning of the commercial is none other than Jack Black. Years before Jumanji and Tenacious D, there was Pitfall. Mr. Black was born in 1969, and with this commercial being released in 1983, that would place him around 14 years old. It's so old that it's not even on his IMDb page. But that's for sure Mr. Jack Black. Just last night, I was lost in the jungle with Pitfall Harry, surrounded by giant scorpions and man-eating crocodiles. Well, Harry and I just grabbed the van, swung through the trees, and over the tar pits and found the jungle treasure. It was really neat. If you haven't met Pitfall Harry, you're missing the year's most incredible video game adventure. Pitfall for the Atari 2600 and in television. Since I met Pitfall Harry, no other man will do. Pitfall, designed by David Crane for... Our number 9 spot is a clear case of plagiarism. IGN steals a Dead Cell review from Boomstick Gaming. There is no doubt about this one being plagiarism. When it comes to a written and recorded review that takes the script almost word for word, then the line has been crossed. The line for music may be a little bit blurred because you can change the instrument, the tempo, and a few notes to drastically change the song and people might not hear the connection. But a review like this? This was absolutely ridiculous for IGN to do. As of this video, they have 11 million subs. You would think they could hire writers who actually write their own material. At the end of it all, IGN took down the review, fired the reviewer, and we all got to find the Boomstick Gaming channel. And their channel gained about 70,000 subscribers that month. So this, for the most part, has a happy ending. If you would like to see the full video comparison of the two reviews, I will include a link to Boomstick Gaming's video so you can judge for yourself. Number 8 is a simple one, and it all comes down to the font used on the Capcom logo. If it wasn't for Capcom, would there even be an oddly familiar? All joking aside, this one involves the Capcom logo and the Capcom font. Capcom was first established on June 11th of 1983 by Kenzo Tsujimoto, and the name Capcom is a clipped compound of Capsule Computers. Their logo has been around since at least 1984 when used on the arcade game Volgus. Although it doesn't have the same blue and yellow color scheme, it uses the same font. And that's what this spot is all about. If you are interested in using the same font, you can find it under the name ITC Corina Heavy. This typeface originates from 1904, but it was revived in the early 70s. You can find the font used in many places, including random magazine ads, and on the TV game show Jeopardy, or even by Mr. Bob Ross himself. If you ever see a font that may look the same as the Capcom logo, it just might be. Shoot, let's go on up here and get started. We have our canvas up, the liquid white's on it, it's ready. In at number 7 is one of the most classic gridiron games of all time. Released in 1989, this was one of the very first football games to go so in depth. You have rosters full of real NFL players, and you can play versus every team basically going through a season. It is missing NFL team names, the Denver Broncos are just Denver, and the Chicago Bears are just Chicago. Now in Tecmo Bowl, when you score a touchdown, you are met by these few frames.
Many people nowadays want more than 60 frames, but back in the day, we were happy just getting four or five. A lot like double dribble. But back to Tecmo and the touchdown celebration. On October 7th of 1984, Chicago Bears running back Walter Payton became the NFL's all-time leading rusher. The game was stopped and Walter was running over to his teammates. And as he was running, you will see that same high five. That was the live version as seen on TV, but if you go back and watch some NFL Films footage, you can find another view of that same celebration. From that view, you can see what Tecmo Bowl was emulating. Walter Payton was my favorite NFL player when I was a kid. I liked watching his running style, and so when I saw this later on Tecmo Bowl, I thought it was cool they were paying homage to my favorite player. Number 6. The Nintendo of America customer service training video. You people amaze me. You really amaze me. Your quality control people, they just have bats in the belfry. Bought this Game Boy yesterday, took it home, nothing. Absolutely nothing. No picture. I didn't make this connection until just a few years ago, and it doesn't really have a place in a normal oddly familiar episode. So, here it is. The man that approaches the Nintendo employee and talks about the EEPROMs would be none other than John Billingsley. Some may know him as Dr. Phlox on Star Trek Enterprise, where he appeared in a total of 98 episodes. He has done many other roles and appeared in many other TV shows since then, but I will always know him as Dr. Phlox. Nintendo's customer service training video was released internally in 1991. It wasn't really meant to be seen by any outsiders and just for employees, but it was leaked and now you can find the video all over the place. Oh. Of, of course, the contrast. I think that was probably my, my, my kid didn't... Uh... I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it? Yeah. Okay. Number five is FIFA 14 by EA Sports. Personally, I am not really a FIFA player, although I did enjoy FIFA on the Nintendo 64. Here on FIFA 14, like all FIFA games, you can play as legendary players. One of the players unlockable is Pele, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, soccer player ever. The picture they used was Pele in a tub. They just photoshopped a jersey on him and removed the tub. I know there is a criteria for the picture. First off, we need Pele looking at the camera. Then we need a photo of him in his playing days. Then we probably don't want a black and white photo. And for best results, an indoor photo so we have controlled lighting. And I guess this is the best they could do. You know they probably only googled Pele and didn't bother to put in real effort. And when you are a multi-million dollar company, how hard is it to get a better photo? Unlucky number four involves GameStop and a Flickr user named Captain Luigi. Imagine walking through GameStop and seeing an advertisement for a game that will be coming out soon. Or maybe browsing Twitter and seeing an advertisement. And the picture used in the ad is one you photoshopped yourself. Well, that's exactly what happened to Captain Luigi. This Super Smash Bros. advertisement hanging on the wall of a GameStop was captured in a photo and shared on Twitter. The next thing you know, Captain Luigi himself was scrolling on by and sees his creation. If there was any doubt at all, just look at the bottom right and notice the watermark. It appears on both. If you have ever wondered why you see a watermark on something, this is why. Number 3, the Nintendo 64 controller and the Wii Nunchuck. If you were to take the Nintendo 64 controller and strip away everything besides the middle handle, you would be left with the Wii Nunchuck. It's pretty much the exact same size, although it does have two trigger buttons and slightly more of a curvature, but you can definitely see the inspiration. I never really paid attention to it, so I never noticed it, but once it was brought to my attention, it gave me a little chuckle.
Our number two spot is held by Echo the Dolphin and the movie Bloodsport. This is one I recently heard while searching for a new synthesizer. I was looking through random YouTube videos to hear how one sound that I was interested in. While searching, I came across a very familiar sounding one. recognized it from Echo the Dolphin on the Sega CD. In that same video, there is another sound that I recognized, and it's from the 1988 movie Bloodsport. Starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, this movie is a classic. So long story short here, the same synthesizer that was used for Echo CD was also used on Bloodsport. The synthesizer is known as PPG Wave 2.3 and it was released in 1984. Nowadays you can find it on sale, but it will cost you a pretty penny. And I may be completely wrong about this, so I have contacted Mr. Nielsen to see if he actually used a PPG 2.3, but I haven't heard back from him yet so I will keep you guys updated once I hear from them. Number one is a double whammy. It happened twice. Family Guy and YouTube. The makers of the cartoon Family Guy used footage they found on YouTube of Tecmo Super Bowl on the NES. They made it look like Peter Griffin was playing the game, it worked well, and it did make me laugh. I didn't know the footage was from YouTube until later on when the player of the video said he was hit with a copyright strike by Fox, the channel that airs Family Guy. It is an automated system, so don't think too bad about Fox because of this. I am sure there are plenty of other reasons. And later on, when they found out, they released the claim. The funny part about this is, the exact same thing happened again later on when Family Guy did the exact same thing with some footage from Double Dribble. Either way, they ended up releasing the copyright claims for both videos, so all ended well. And the uploaders of those two videos saw a drastic spike in views, so they were probably okay with it after all was said and done. No, no, that's what I'm talking about. Steal. Up, corner three. So our very first random episode has come to a close. I don't know if we will do a second episode like this. I guess it depends on how this one is received. So just let us know what you think. Or if you have an oddly familiar moment to share. Anyways, from now until then, I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.